It's about 7.30 a.m. Pegan Pass trail starts there. Little rental cars right there. Beating the traffic. Got here by 7. We left the campsite at about 6. Or we got here 7.30. We'll start off in the forest, but if you want to skip ahead to the big views, here are the times on the screen. That is a wolverine print. Apparently there are wolverines here. Yeah, 7.30 in the morning, about 55 degrees or less. My thermometer is probably not quite reading right yet. Yep, some minor snow. So we're headed up that way. That's right, grizzly country, and you can see Roxana has hers, I have mine. We are armed with bear spray just in case, hoping not to need to use it. And this is what we want. You know, we get a lot of big views, so we're not doing the high line. We want the deep forest. And there's still going to be plenty of views here. Look at that. We'll get some better exposures for you as we get up there and get better light. After my thermometer adjusted, it's reading about 53, but we're already warming up going uphill here. And it's probably going to be 80s. Lots of water flowing along the trail. Hey, bear! And as we head into bear country, we are giving out a yell out every once in a while just to alert the bears, just in case, especially since it's early in the morning and there's very few other people out here. Really nice trail. Kind of funny, we've got the sound of the echoes of people shouting, Hey bear! all throughout the mountains, just in case everybody's shouting their warnings. Yeah, now we got a mountain in front of us. Beautiful out here. And quite a few echoes from people shouting, hey bear. We eventually realized it was one guy who was overdoing it a little bit. Yes, you definitely need to make noise, but you can space it out a little bit, maybe every minute, not every 15 seconds, especially when everyone can hear you for a mile around. But hey, some people are nervous. You can feel the hot and the cold air mingling like right as you're crossing the Because we're at the trail. pass here, there's the mountain there, the mountain there, and it goes down that way and down that way. And there's our first view of Pegan Glacier. We'll get a better look in a minute. We're going to have better lighting for a lot of this stuff on the way back. Let's take a look at Pegan Glacier for a moment. The heavy snow this year means that the ice is covered in a good foot or two of snow still, but we can still see some ripples there that tell you that there's thick ice underneath that snow. And at this point, most of the other people on the trail have passed us and appear to have taken the other trail at the, at the junction up ahead because we'll see four or five more people for the rest of the day. So we're at the little junction here. Uh, we've actually technically been on the Continental Divide Trail since the last junction. Um, anyway, we're going to take this towards Pegan Pass. Gotta be 70s already, it's warming up, but Glacier had a huge snow year. Look at all that. That's Blackfoot and Jackson Glacier. You might be able to see the pile of ice underneath the snow there. Oh boy, the view just got a lot bigger. Might be able to see the trail. You can probably see it now, there it is. And that's about where the pass is. Look at that drop. That is just a wall of rock. I like big rocks. And we got a nice sized glacier, what's left of it anyway. Keep in mind though, well, if, yeah, these glaciers are melting and they will probably be gone in about 12 years. These glaciers that we see now are not actually the same glaciers that carved the park. The park was carved like a million years ago. These are left over from a more recent ice age. But the glaciers that actually carved the mountains in this park, they are melted and long, long time ago. Yeah, this trail's not as popular as the Highline Trail because the views aren't quite as big, but they're big enough for us. And we really wanted to be in the forest 
not deal with too many crowds and not be on the exposed, windswept. Do have a nice couple mile of exposure ahead of us here. This should be fun. Nice scree field above us. There are a lot of flies and mosquitoes. Definitely need bug spray. across that but not too bad and even if you slide down you'll hit the rocks in only 10 or 20 yards so Oksana's feeling brave tried to get her to wait for me that one was kind of scary I mean the snow's soft but now this is how you know people have been feeding look at this thing it's running at us get out of here get out of here he just all right you want to eat a flower go ahead eat. no you go off, go on. Yeah, that's better, you go down. No, 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 no. Well, there's the car. We went, did kind of a switch back up that forest and, boy, this is nice. Right on the edge. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, you can on most places go off trail here and they obviously have plans to, they want to go up. Oh, right on. 77 degrees. The wind is nice keeping the bugs down. The flies do hover if you sit for too long though. Beautiful, look at that wall. a little bit. Oh, there it is. Now look at this drop off. Well this is amazing. Here we are we just crossed over Pegan Pass. I guess this is looking roughly northeast. More north. Look at that red out there. Yep, this is our lunch spot.
took this trail is because it's on the CDT. And there they are. There are some Continental Divide trail hikers. That was really excellent. I wanted to talk to them for a minute. They said it was fine if I showed them continuing their journey. and marmots just creeping on us. How about you leave us alone? No. Bye-bye. Quite a few off trail people. Somebody's going up that peak. Another guy just went up that way. Grouses. And the marmots are coming in to investigate. Yeah, those marmots are definitely chasing after the babies. I don't know if they would eat them or if they're just chasing them away. Now they're chasing each other. I know any of the various loops are fantastic, but I sure do not mind an out and back seeing this twice. And we head into the forest, back down. Go through the water and Two mile, two and a half miles downhill. Yeah, and it's a good thing we brought the filter. So we went through well over a gallon of water here. Thick forest. Look at these tiny trees. And then they get bigger. Instead of going directly back to the car, we'll follow the Continental Divide Trail down to Jackson Glacier Overlook. This section of the trail is very rarely used. So it was a mostly out and back with a little tiny loop at the end. Last little bit is pretty crazy. Look at Roxanne up there. And we'll have a few minutes before the next shuttle. And we've made it to Jackson Glacier Overlook shuttle stop. We're going to take the shuttle east to St. Mary, pick up our backcountry permit, and then head back to our car. So, yeah, it, we've got a project ahead of us. But, all right, thanks for coming with us, and uh, we'll have more for you soon.